Let's look at a situation that involves a little bit more than linear motion, a projectile motion situation. Here it is. Sir Francis Drake's ship fires a cannonball at an enemy galleon. At time t equals zero seconds, the cannonball has an initial velocity of 200 feet per second and a 20 degree angle of elevation, just like in the figure here. We're to find the cannonball's position, point x comma y, as a function of time. Assume the point 0, 10 represents the point from which the cannonball was fired. So not from sea level, but 10 feet up on the deck of Sir Francis Drake's ship. Here we have a situation very similar to the linear motion. So we're going to start in the same way. We need our two equations, x and y. So x in terms of t and y in terms of t. And we'll start with our initial position, just like we did in the linear example. So x starts at 0 and y starts at 10. Now we need our motion information, or rate times time. But right now, the rate we have isn't in terms of horizontal rates and vertical rates. It's given to us with a polar perspective, with a magnitude and a direction, 200 feet per second and 20 degree angle. So I need to convert that information 200 feet per second at 20 degrees into vertical and horizontal velocities. I'll call them Vx and Vy. Using our right triangle information and our conversion formulas, we can see that Vx is going to be 200 cosine 20 degrees, and Vy is going to be 200 sine 20 degrees. Now we can use those velocities and work into our paramet work them into our parametric equations. So x is going to be 0 plus my velocity times time. So 200 cosine 20 degrees times t. And we'll use the same approach for y. So 200 sine 20 degrees times t. And you'd think we would be done, but we're not. Because in this situation, we have gravity as an additional consideration. And gravity works on our vertical position by pulling down. And so what that means is we need to add in a term that deals with the gravity. And when we're working with feet per second, Our gravity term is going to be negative 16 t squared. So we'll slip that into our y equation, negative 16 t squared. If we were working in meters per second, that term would instead be negative 4.9 t squared. So the general form of our y parametric piece is going to take the form y of t equals, I'll put it in reverse order here, negative 16 t squared plus our initial y velocity times time plus our initial y position. And this equation will be used in every projectile motion problem.